Okay, welcome to Unit 3. Unit 3, we're going to be talking about cells. This corresponds to Chapter 7 in our textbook. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about uh, what exactly cells are, what led to the discovery of cells. Like uh, We know we're going to learn about the scientists, but what actually caused them? What was the, 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 the big spark that finally led us to the, to the discovery of cells? What's the cell theory, and then what are the major types of cells? Now, if you'll remember back from our first unit, we talked about cells being one of the characteristics of life, that all living things have cells in them. But cells themselves, even the ones that make up you, are living things on the, uh, uh, all their own. Now, they may rely on other cells, and now that goes back to their interdependence in order to survive as part of a multicellular organism, but they themselves are living things. They live, they reproduce, they die, they do all the same functions as us. They go through metabolism, they use energy and water to create, new, to, to create energy, excuse me, and then make waste. Uh, they go through reproduction, they make new cells. They've evolved, they've changed over billions of years to go from a simple little bubble, basically, to something that has these complex structures and highways and things going on inside of them. Uh, they have heredity, they pass on genetic material from one cell to the next when they go through a reproduction. They constantly are going through homeostasis. Uh, they have to keep that internal condition stable because if not, then that cell dies. Uh, interdependence, like I said, they rely on each other. And then development, they actually all cells started uh, from one simple cell that didn't really have a function other than to make new cells. And then they change and then they've differentiated over time to be given a specific job and shape to match their job. So who do we credit with the discovery of cells? Well, it's an English scientist from the 1600s by the name of Robert Hooke. And he actually had one of the first versions of a microscope, and he was just playing around with it, throwing stuff underneath there, and like, oh my gosh, look at salt, oh my gosh, look at water, oh, you know, just throwing these different things under there. And one of the things that he put under his microscope was a thin piece of cork. Well, in case you weren't aware, cork is a part of a tree, it's, it's a plant material. And when he actually put it under there, he saw these rows and rows of boxes, and he theorized that these must be the building blocks of living things. So he, they reminded him of like rooms in a monastery, which are called cells, and that's where the monks lived. So that's where we actually get the term cells from. Robert Hooke is the one that coined the phrase, and it's based not on jail cells, but on the cells or the rooms that the monks lived in these monasteries. Now, there's some other scientists who are credited with parts of discovering cells. For example, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, he's a Dutch microscope maker. He actually made one of the very first microscopes. And he was observing pond water and saw these little things swimming around inside of the pond water. So we actually credit him with, uh, with seeing uh, cells, uh, seeing living cells for the first time. He was the first one to do that. But we're not crediting him with actually being the first to see cells. We, we give that to Robert Hooke, even though Leeuwenhoek may have actually been the first one based on a timeline. Uh, Schleiden concluded that all plants were made up of cells. He was a botanist. He looked at different leaves at different plant materials, and he figured out that they were all made up of these cells that Robert Hooke had discovered. Uh, Schwann concluded that all animals are made up of cells. This so is similar to Schwe uh, Schleiden, and in case you, it, you're trying to have, uh, or excuse me, you're trying to study these, just remember that Schwann like, sounds like swan, and swan's an animal, so he's the one that concluded the animals, if that helps. I don't know, just one of those things. And then Virchow, uh, Virchow we say, uh, he's the one that is credited with reasoning that all cells come from other cells. Now, if I put all these things together, I get something called the cell theory. The cell theory has three important parts. The first one, all living things composed of cells, obviously. Two, cells are the basic unit of structure and function, so you are made of cells. Whether you're a plant, an animal, a fungus, a bacteria, whatever you are, if you're a living thing, you are made up of cells. It could be one, it could be a trillion, okay? But everything is made up of cells. And number three, cells can only come from the reproduction of other living cells. So cells can only come from other living cells. These three things together are called the cell theory. These three things together are very important for you for the next couple of weeks, okay? You need to know the cell theory inside and out. You're going to be asked it several times. Let's talk about the types of cells. Now, the first group is actually the first living life form on the planet, and those are prokaryotes. They uh, showed up about 3.5 billion years ago, or BYA, sometimes you'll see it written. Uh, so they were basically just uh, simple little bubbles, like I said. They had no membrane-bound organelles, so they have no specialized parts inside of them. They can only be single-celled. They're actually still here on the planet today. They have no nucleus. Their genetic material, their DNA or their RNA, is spread throughout their entire body. Okay, and they contain only these four things, a cell membrane, a cytoplasm, uh, ribosomes, and DNA. Now, I understand that you probably don't know what some of these things are, like cytoplasm and ribosomes. That's okay, okay but just know that these four things are contained in uh, prokaryotes. Okay? 
Like I said, an example would be a bacteria. So here's an example of a bacteria right here. You can see it's got some fluid inside it, these little stringy things and some other stuff going on there. That is that is a bacteria. Those are still here today. They look exactly, almost exactly the same 3.5 billion years ago as they do now. They've been around, like I said, this whole time. Bacteria are the oldest living things on the planet. Okay, eukaryotes then are the modern versions of cells. These are what you and I are made of. Get it? Eukaryotes. Actually, the U on the front there means modern in case you weren't sure. Uh, but they have several types of organelles which perform specific functions inside of them. They evolved, so there's that evolution we talked about at the beginning, from prokaryotes about 1.5 billion years ago. They could be single-celled or multicellular, so amoebas would be an example of a single-celled eukaryote. You would be an example of a multicellular eukaryote. They have a nucleus, and that's where their DNA is stored. And examples would be plants and animal cells. Now, in the next uh, section, we'll talk about the differences between plant and animals and actually the functions of these organelles. But for now, just understand that they have several specialized parts, and that's what makes them eukaryotic. Okay, the fact that they have a nucleus right there in the middle, that's bingo. You see nucleus, you know it has to be a eukaryote. Okay? So a quick review of what we just covered today. What are cells? We said that cells are the smallest unit of life. They make all living things. What led to the discovery of cells? Well, we know that Robert Hooke and Anton von Leeuwenhoek, who were the first two to see cells, and uh, Hooke actually coined the phrase cells, they needed that microscope, those early invention, that early uh, microscope, in order to actually discover cells. Cell theory has three parts. Okay, all living things are made of cells, the basic unit of structure and function, and can only come from other cells. And then the two types of cells are prokaryotes and eukaryotes, pro being 3.5 billion years old, old, excuse me, ooh, <laughs> and eukaryotes being 1.5 billion years old. Okay, key vocabulary that we covered today, uh, make sure you know Robert Hooke and the other scientists. I know I put his name on here and didn't put the others, but make sure you know all the scientists, obviously cell microscope, cell theory, prokaryote and eukaryote. Okay, there's some other terms in there like ribosome, cytoplasm that we'll cover in the next section that you'll have to know, but these are some of the important terms from this section. Okay, hope you learned something. Please go back and review if you didn't. There are summary questions at the bottom of your uh, notes. Make sure you answer those and have a great day.